Hello everyone, it's Cindy Ingram and I am back for another Artsy Autistic Update. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how this first year has gone, knowing that I'm autistic. Update since the last video, which was back in March or February. It's, it's October now, so it's been quite a while. And while I do that, I am going to be making a mosaic, because that is my new passion. And I'm in my alien era, so I'm going to show you what I've made so far so you can see what I'm up to. This is my first one. I love it so much. So it's made out of glass and I cut all those pieces and moved them down and got it and all things. And then I also have done this one. Well, E.T. vibes. Not E.T., but it turned out kind of looking like E.T. And then I decided to try making a scene. And so I have an alien abducting some dinosaurs. So much fun. When I started taking mosaic classes in the spring, I did two dinosaurs, which I don't have in the room, so I can't show you those. So that last one combines my dinosaur and my alien mosaics together. And today I'm working on this dude. And I've already done the eyes. I tried to do the eyes while on video and I couldn't because the eyes are so delicate and like intricate. They're the hardest part. And so I was just like, you know, I couldn't talk and do it at the same time. I'm going to start with the dark parts, which are these areas that I have circled in and then I'll take it from there. All right. So autism, right? Okay. So I discovered I was autistic back in December and as everybody who figures out they're autistic realizes it throws your whole life into disarray because you have to kind of rethink everything that's ever happened to you. <laughs> and you realize after a lifetime of wondering what is wrong that you suddenly like know and it's not something wrong, but you know like the reason why you felt the way you felt like your whole life. And so it's really like a relief, but at the same time, it is sad and it is, there's some grief. There's some acceptance. In my last video that I did about the autism, I told you I was going through kind of a depression low period. And I'm, I apologize for <laughs> making that video and then never coming back because. I'm like, hey, I'm depressed. And then I leave and not make any more videos. Not a good place to leave y'all on. But if you follow me on social media, you know I was okay. I got through that. That took some time. I went to a psychiatrist and we tried a lot of variations of medications and failed. None of them. None of them worked. This looks like black. It's not black, but it looks black. Hopefully that turns out okay. And yeah, I finally, like oh, everything we tried gave me side effects or didn't work or like, you know, most of them just gave me bad side effects. And then finally I was just like, I'm done. I'm going to go back to what I was on originally. You know, I think I, I worked through enough of the stuff in therapy to where I was like, okay, I was okay. And then I just went back to the medicine that I was on and I'm feeling a lot better. And I apologize for that noise. That's going to be the probably the most annoying noise. And if you're watching this and um, the noise is bothering you, let me know. And I will not make mosaics on camera again because I can always be working on something else. But what has happened is not, I wouldn't say it's a depression at all, but it is a, like, a retreat, a hermit type vibes like I want to not do anything outside of the house I want to stay home I don't want to socialize I don't want to go to loud places I don't want to talk like it has made me really turn inward in a way that I wasn't really expecting and I and it makes me feel I don't know if it's guilty or you know, it's like a worry I'm going to lose friendships because of it. But what I think is happening is that I have had a, like basically a lifetime of pushing through things that have made me uncomfortable. And I have prided myself in being strong and not needing help. And one of the things I talked about in my earlier videos is like one of the first thoughts that I had when I 
realized I was autistic was like, oh, that's weakness. Like that was, that was my first thought. And I guess what I'm coming to terms with throughout all this time is realizing I was so disconnected from my body and my limits and what I can and can't do, like what makes something too much. So if, if something is too much for me, if something is overwhelming, I would just kind of suck it up and, and try to just grin and bear it. And I would use alcohol as a way to get through social situations or overstimulating experiences and stuff like that. And then I also, you know, had a lot of rules for myself socially too that I built up over the years. But, you know, I was continually reaching my capacity burning out, going past my capacity, burning out, going past my capacity, burning out, going past my capacity, burning out. And I think what's causing me to kind of turn inward so much is that I really need to figure out what my limits really are and how to not constantly be burnt out constantly be exhausted constantly be like not functional and I was just so disconnected from what that is that completely stopping everything feels like the the way to figure it out you know because if, if I'm not doing if I'm doing very little then I can make small adjustments and see how it makes me feel so like okay if I do a lot of work one day, like I get really engrossed in a, in a project for work, how does that make me feel the next day? And so I've had to become really in tune with that because what would happen is I, I wouldn't notice my overstimulation until it was too late, until I'm on, like, on the other side of that feeling like crap. And so I'm having to learn to prevent burnout and how to prevent overstimulation and how to keep myself as regulated, my nervous system as regulated as possible so that I can kind of learn its limits. And that has been really challenging. As an example of this, the other day I was talking to my husband about something and I was kind of trying to make a decision about something big. And I was like, you know, I probably shouldn't even be making this decision if I'm not at 100% capacity. And then I stopped and I was like, what is 100% capacity? Like, I don't know what capacity. I, I was like, maybe I am at 100% capacity right now. Maybe this is all I can handle. Maybe this is the slowness that my life needs. Maybe going out once every month or once every two months is the only thing that I can do. I don't know what my capacity is. I don't know what I can handle anymore. Because one of the things that happens when you learn you're autistic is something called skill regression, which is basically like you can't use the coping mechanisms that you used in the past. The things that got you through can no longer do that because you know, you know what's happening. And so it's just, you, you just can't do it anymore. And that has been really hard. Like cooking has always been a challenge for me. I do it because I have to, or, you know, or whatever, but it's like, I don't have to, but it has become really hard to follow a recipe <laughs> and it's become really hard to stay focused while doing that. And it's become really hard to get the motivation to even start. And I get really overwhelmed, like with the steps of cooking when it used to be something I could do you know, not easily, but, you know, a lot easier. And it's like I'm a baby again, you know, and I'm like having to relearn everything. So right now I do feel really good. I feel at peace. I feel regulated most of the time. I don't have much anxiety or depression, which is great. But I'm also not doing... I mean, if you were to, like make a list of all the things I did before in a day or week or month. And what I do now, that list is drastically smaller. Like even like driving places, 
It gets really hard. I've always been bad at missing turns, but I miss more turns now than I ever did. I get distracted. I'm a pretty patient driver, but like it just, it takes so much more energy than it did before. Everything takes more energy than it did before. And, and I think it did take energy before and that's what was making me burned out. But now I guess I'm just noticing it more. And so I've, I've had to tell my friends like, hey y'all, and it's not that I don't like you. I don't want to see you anymore or anything like that. But it's, it's just that I can't. And I have a hard time even explaining it. And I've had to get over like the guilt of it because I've lived a life where I... I do so much caring about like what people think of me and, and trying to keep everybody else comfortable and put myself last. And I'm having to put myself front and center and first. And in every decision I make, I have to think, what is this going to do to me now? Does it sound good now? And will it still be good later? Is this going to like put me out of commission for three days because I overdid it? And that's been the hard line I'm trying to balance. I'm doing this mosaic in a different way than I normally do. I usually kind of work on one section at a time, but I, I didn't want to have to think about the colors while I was talking, so I decided to only do the dark parts. It's a really different feeling. It's, it's going to be a different, just a different way of doing it. I think it'll still turn out good. It's just confusing me a little bit, <laughs> I guess. Well, that piece is almost ready to go. So I guess I'm having to have a lot of patience with myself, hoping that every that that the people in my life have patience with me and just do what I'm doing, just slowly figure it out. This article that I recently read by Catherine May, which I, if I remember, I'll put a link in the show notes. I probably won't remember, but she found out she was autistic nine years ago and she, she described exactly what. I'm going through and I sent it to my friends I was like this is exactly what I'm doing this exactly describes what I can't seem to describe and she is nine years out and she's just now starting to come out of her shell a little bit more and I'm like nine years is that how long it's going to take nine years I mean that's wild I don't even I don't even know that's how long but it is it's that big of a thing and if it's all like, I know like a lot of my like Substack articles are about it. A lot of my social media posts are about it. And if you, if you know anybody else too, that's going through this diagnosis of ADHD and or autism or both, it's like, and you're like, God, they're talking about it all the time. It's because it's all consuming. It describes everything that you've ever experienced. So you're just looking at your whole life differently and you're like oh that's why that happened oh I can't you know like it just everything makes sense and like oh I wish I wish I would have known god I wish I would have known my kids are so lucky that they know now because god if only I would have known it's okay um so what else has happened in this time is I I did make a video about how it wasn't going to get tested because self-diagnosis is enough and it's expensive and all this stuff. But then I hit my out-of-pocket maximum for my insurance. And so I was like, oh, it's going to be free. So I ended up doing the testing and getting formal diagnoses of both AD uh, autism and ADHD. And it didn't change anything, but it also did. And surprisingly, it was more the ADHD that I was impacted by because of how, oh, see, yeah. Uh, not see. I haven't told you. I get, I poke myself and then I bleed. Feels like a bug bite. It's a really painful, sharp thing that happens. Okay. But it's not really that one. So I'm, I think I'm okay. I don't think I need to go get a band-aid. Because, you know, I went to a psychiatrist before and he put me on Stratera and he, he was like, I believe you. And I didn't like that guy. But he did these computer tests that weren't FDA approved. And so like they didn't show anything. And my primary care doctor was like, those tests aren't, if she was like, they don't, they're not proven to work. So, you know, that doesn't mean anything that it didn't show up on there because it definitely showed up on the ones that are approved. <laughs> the Tova test with the psychologist that I, that I met with 
after the testing, she was like, told me I was ADHD as fuck, basically. But she, she looked at the results and she was like, oh yeah, <laughs> which was really funny. And so it's, it's almost like because I had had that weird test that didn't show anything and then that, that guy was kind of doubting me that first psych, you know, it was like, I, I knew I had ADHD. I, cause I experienced my brain and I know what my brain is like and it is never never calm never you know it's just all the things I'm, i just don't it just never stops i lose things and I, I just blood all over this piece okay so because i had had those tests that were inconclusive or didn't so attention issues there was this kind of I was just annoyed by that you know and I was like I knew that it wasn't true so anyway it felt, it felt really validating to get the ADHD diagnosis and what is that I thought it was I should stop and go get a band-aid yeah, it felt really good to have that proof. And I guess, and also too, I have been so focused on the autism this year because that's the new one I figured out. You know, the ADHD, I already gone through that phase of, oh my gosh, this is a revolution, a revelation that I kind of forgot about it in terms of like, I forgot how revolutionary it is to know that. And so I guess maybe it's just like I started noticing it more after I got diagnosed. It was like, I... It became like, oh, I'm not just ADHD, I'm ADHD. It became like, or I'm not just autistic, I'm ADHD. That it's a completely different thing. That it's like, that it's so different than just having autism or just having ADHD. That it's this whole unique experience of its own. And I don't feel like I have a lot of, you know, I don't see a lot of people talking about both. And about what it's like to have both. And I'm kind of craving that. So I'm hoping to... I guess talk about that a little bit more on the channel because it really is a trip <laughs> and I have spent also a lot of time over the last year grappling with internalized ableism even though I have a sign <laughs> over there which I, yeah oh it's you can see it it's right there you can see half of it. I made it while watching a YouTube video from Mom on the Spectrum, and she said one of the things that you can do once you get diagnosed or whatever is that you can stop gaslighting yourself. And I can't tell you how many times I've said over and over, this is real. This is real. This is real. This is real. Because so many, you know, it, so many times in my past, if I tried to talk to someone about my experience of what it's like in my brain, it's always something like, oh, everybody's like that. And that is a very common response that autistic and ADHD people get is, oh, everybody does that. Oh, everybody does that. Which is true. You know, the symptoms of ADHD, the symptoms of autism, the symptoms, not symptoms, characteristics, are common on, amongst everybody. Everybody does experience focus issues. Every do, everybody does experience forgetfulness. Every do, everybody does experience some degree of social confusion or whatever. Or, you know, maybe there everybody experience, experiences burnout and shutdown in some degrees. But it is about the severity and the frequency of these things. So anytime I would ever bring it up with someone, I would just get that response. And it's just like, it's it just makes you feel crazy. You're like, no, this is different. Like this feels different than what everyone else seems to be experiencing. And how can I help people understand like that what I'm talking about is different than what they're what they're experiencing. It is so frustrating because you just it just you just get shut down and you're like you feel completely whoops oh my god this one's not going well I feel completely unseen and so you 
stop trying to tell people because it just, they don't get it. And you're just going to end up feeling bad and you're going to end up feeling unseen again and misunderstood. And, you know, okay, it's just, I must be crazy. You know, like I'm, I must be, I must be wrong I must be like why can't I handle it if everybody is indeed experiencing this why am I having such a hard time with it um and that is just hard it's hard to break like I've it's just been in my head like over and over again and because it's invisible and because I've had a lifetime of people telling me it's normal and and then we're fine and all of this is made up that internalized ableism is really really hard to deal with because I'm constantly judging myself of like why can't I do the things I used to be able to do why can't I you know even the things I used to not be able to do like I still think I should be able to somehow do them and it's just a constant battle and getting that diagnosis has helped that a little bit because I'm like yes it is real 100% real proven on a, on a piece of paper by somebody, you know, and it's still, it's still hard. Um, it's still hard to kind of grapple with that feeling of, because it is a disability. You know, there's some people that say it's not, it's kind of up to them. Some people like, don't like to say that, but I do believe it is. And well, it is technically in science in the American Disabilities Act. So by definition it is but anyway like both ADHD and autism are considered disabilities and what makes it so hard is that they're invisible disabilities and then the people that know you and have always known you and they've seen the version of you that pushed through and they've seen the version of you that succeeded despite and they've seen the version of you like that was hiding how all the pain inside and all the discomfort and all of the sensory overwhelm and all of the social overwhelm and the part that learned how to small talk and that learned how to talk to people. And the, you know, like they've seen that person. And so it's hard to, to be like, well, yeah, that person wasn't real. Like they were real. I was real and they're, I'm there. But I have been hiding my discomfort and I have been hiding, yeah, my discomfort and, and my struggles. And I've accommodated myself throughout my life so that I could, so that I could survive. Like I run my own business because I can't have a job. Like I can't work for other people. It's too confusing and it's too frustrating. And it's too, like teaching was so sensory overwhelming. Like I, just, I could barely handle it. and. You know, so I got a job working from home and then I, then I got a job where I'm the boss. And then I even had to change my business when I realized like, okay, I can't really handle having too many employees. It's a little too overwhelming for me there too. So, you know, it's like, and I have figured out accommodations along the way so that I'm able to succeed and survive. And not every, not every autistic and ADHD person ADHD person hasn't been able to do that as successfully as I have been able to do it but I you know I'm just a very highly masked person and I can't put the mask back on and I don't want to put the mask back on I mean I ha I have to have the mask maybe you know the mask is useful sometimes sometimes you just you have to put the mask on but it feels like I'm a different person and now I have to learn how to live again <laughs> as this different person. So not the easiest task. But basically what I'm doing this year is rebuilding. It's a rebuilding year. <laughs> it is a recalibrating. It is a reconfiguring of my life, of my business, of my relationships. I am putting everything under the microscope and really tapping in with how everything makes me feel and learning to cope. And I'm doing that with a lot of just time and slowness. And I do have a good 
support system for that. And I'm having to sort of rebuild my business so that I don't burn out. Okay, so that is my artsy artistic update for today. That's what I accomplished. <laughs> Got the dark areas on the alien. Probably go in next and do the next value down. And yeah, thank you for watching. If you have any questions about my experience or, or what I've been going through, I'm happy to answer them. I'll be back on this channel for more Audi HD updates, but also, you know, talking about art and making art and expect a lot more videos from me. Make sure you click subscribe. There's a little notification button you can push to be notified when I have a new video. And click like, comment, all that kind of stuff. All right. Thank you very much. And I'll talk to you next time.